What's up guys, Philip at Trade Genius. In this video, I just wanted to recap kind of all the positive news that happened this week uh, with regards to crypto and Bitcoin uh, in general and what that means going forward. Also, we'll take a look at our uh, model and see how price is reacting compared to what the model says we're supposed to do. All right guys, well, let's dive into this video. Trade Genius. Guys, as always, uh, letting you know whenever we're running specials and we have our current fall specials running through the weekend. Uh, $3.99 gets you into the room. We had a couple more winners uh, book profits on in the last 24 hours. So again, every day we're looking for opportunities to make you guys some money. Uh, $3.99, uh, you'll make that back in no time with the programs that we run with the ETF binary options and the currency, cryptocurrency signals. All right, so let's take a look at the news. Uh, First up, I want to cover Paxos. Now, Paxos is already a, a crypto startup company. They actually are a regulated custodian, meaning that they can hold funds uh, for institutional investors. And they've actually come up with a dollar backed stable coin. So this would be like um, USD Tether, which is prevalent, uh, and then followed by True USD, which the exchanges treat like an inverse uh, trading pair uh, to Bitcoin. And this one's going to be another stable coin. So uh, what's nice about this is this is a domestic regulated entity. Uh, right now, the problem with things like uh, Tether, especially, is that it's never been audited. So we truly don't know if every single Tether out there has been uh, accounted for or dollar backed. And that's the key with these stable coins is that they need to be dollar backed. Otherwise, you're just printing money, right? And um, being able to affect crypto prices that way. So. The other one is Gemini also, Gemini Exchange, that's the Winklevoss twins. They've launched or plans to launch their own crypto peg to the dollar. So this is again, another stable coin. Uh, it's gonna be called GUSD or Gemini USD. Uh, this one's actually a little better because they actually specify that they're going to be um, audited, third party audited. So independent auditor. BPM accounting and consulting will review the company's bank holdings on a monthly basis with Gemini intending to make those audits publicly available. So that's been the, for me for stable coins, uh, anything tethered to the dollar, that's been the real big issue for me. So I think this is going to put uh, USDT or tether on notice and we may see a shift away from that unless they come up with some third party audits themselves. Uh, past audit attempts by them never came through. So this is really, really, really good. Uh, all the uh, stablecoin tether type uh, conspiracy theories that you know this is a lot of the market volatility or uh, manipulation has been through the use of tether. This stuff coming about uh, and and taking the place of that would eliminate such such thoughts. And again, and you know to be on to be fair, until they're they're audited, um, uh, tether you know you have those doubts out there. So the other thing is the crypto uh, or the EU Commission, European Union Commission said crypto assets are here to stay. Again, this is pretty big. The one thing that, um, you know, th this, these guys are in a pretty powerful position. So for them to recognize crypto is here to stay, you know, again, those naysayers that say it's going to zero or it's gonna get outlawed by big government. I think we're way past those days, guys. You know, this is going forward, you know, looking at, you know, um, things on a progressive, in a progressive way, uh, these guys are, are committing to that, you know, we're entering into a new phase here of how we handle money. Also, what was interesting is he didn't really, they didn't really look down too much on ICOs. They actually had some positive comments that it could be a, a form of alternative financing. So ICO models have their issues. I'm not a huge fan of it in its current form, but it's interesting that they were open to that. Uh, so I thought it was a pretty progressive comment on that. Uh, ICO Journal brought out that Citigroup is forming a Bitcoin security product. Uh, this would be what's called an ADR, or American Depository, uh, Depository Receipt. So they do this for like foreign shares a lot of times. What I'm not super clear on is whether or not this is going to be just a straight up derivative or they're actually going to back each one with a physical um, Bitcoin or as physical as you can get with a digital product like Bitcoin. Um, so will they have them in a custodian wallet and backed by Bitcoins, or is this just gonna be uh, like a derivative like futures where it's just based on the underlying asset value? 
Uh, I'm not a fan of derivatives when it comes to Bitcoin, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what exactly comes of that. But again, showing you guys institutional money is revving up the engines here. We didn't see this on the run to 20K. There was no institutional for the large part uh, that we're seeing right now. So this is all the stuff getting ready and then you're gonna see it manifest over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, Bitcoin mutual fund launches in Canada, all right? So this is an actual Bitcoin backed mutual fund. Uh, this is gonna be on the Canadian, um, ex uh, they have a Neo Connect, which is a platform that is like a, an exchange open Canada. Uh, and so that's gonna be uh, traded on there. So that's a pretty big deal for you Canadian folks, and I think in the in, for the industry in general. Morgan Stanley plans to offer Bitcoin swap trading for clients. Remember we said a few videos back, actually a couple months back, we said do as they do, not as they say. Last September, we put in a low for Bitcoin, a largely in part due to the fact that Jamie Dimon came out and said it was a fraud. Uh, and that was actually, a, a that marked a, a bottom, a long-term bottom in Bitcoin back in September of 2017. Here we are a year later, completely different uh, headline. And now they're trading on the behalf of clients. And they actually were back then too. It was just that they weren't um, so you know spoke, outspoken against Bitcoin from the top. But uh, again, this is this is what banks do. You know, they'll they'll sit there and say uh, or counter argument things that they're actually getting into. They want to get in at the best possible price. Uh, you know, just a very classic example of that. So <clears throat> I don't like their strategy. It's gonna be a derivative. I don't like it. But then again, coming from Morgan Stanley, kind of to be expected, but I don't like it. Uh, BitGo receives regulatory approval to custody crypto assets. So again, uh, another domestic regulated company is going to be a custodian. So this is the other component. So you've got institutional, um, large size uh, firms getting into the crypto space and now part of that was how do you get a, how how do you handle the custodianship these guys are in the business of trading you know they have things like um you know the banks handle the the, the funds and how in the security of the funds now you've got that part of that equation with several different uh firms now getting into this space that are regulated that are going to be able to handle that custodian uh, issue so uh this is a very positive uh development in my in my view and then nasdaq said to be building a tool to predict crypto price movements um you know this is basically an analytical tool set for in, um, institutional investors so pretty for me this is just driving home the point that this stuff isn't going anywhere is it going to be harder to trade uh, if you're into like the, the short term stuff? Yeah, I think it's going to get a little more sophisticated. Uh, some of the more simpler strategies that worked in years past are probably not going to cut the mustard going forward. But that's the stuff we look at as we develop uh, our training tools and uh, pass that along to you guys. So very positive news, uh, I think, this week uh, showing that, uh, you know, the movement hasn't slowed. In fact, it's gaining uh, quite a bit uh, quite a bit faster as far as growth is concerned with these firms. All right, so now what I wanted to do was to go ahead and jump into our model and look at how that's progressing. So, you know, there's a lot of lines on this chart, guys. This is our compressed 2014, 2015 timeframe, and this is our current uh, daily timeframe. And, you know, all these points, for the most part, are kind of where in th this model up here, which has already happened, uh, is, marking kind of the lows and highs. Uh, for a large portion of these, they've marked great entry points on the current daily chart. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at this as a roadmap. So this current frame that we're in, and this isn't 100% perfect, but I think it's largely, I mean, if you were to strip away a lot of these lines from each individual high-low and just go with like the major lows and highs, you would see that a lot of times, there's a couple exceptions, but a lot of times this thing has marked very nice swing entries and so the current one that we're in is off of this line here which marks near the low that we've pivoted off of and would top out here which is the equivalent of us at september 18th it would indicate a higher high which would mean getting up above this 7500 level and then around that september 18th time frame we would see a, a bit of a pullback some consolidation and a further pullback so 
as far as that structure goes, uh, it's fallen in line with that, with what we're seeing so far. Uh, we did have a little bit of a divergence where this chart said we were gonna make a higher high and we did not get that here, but the swings have been pivoting around the same time. So as far as timing of, of where the price pivots, uh, still, still hitting pretty good on that. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's pretty much it for this week, guys. I hope these videos have helped. Uh, I think a lot of positive news has come out. And, uh, you know, I think overall what will happen is you're going to look back on this time period. And if you didn't get vested into Bitcoin, I think you're going to look back and see, God, it was so obvious. But there's a lot of bearish sentiment, which you you have in a bear market. And it gets very bearish toward the end. Uh, it makes it hard for you to go counter trend and pull the trigger. But we maintain that you want to you want to accumulate Bitcoin. And really, I think that's going to pay off in the next uh, 12 to 24 months and and further out as a. Uh, as it expands throughout the globe. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. If you're on mobile, ring that bell, and I will see you on the next video. Have a great weekend. Bye. Trade Genius.